2 plus 3 over 2 is 5 halves, better known as what? 2.5. So if you would have done this and said the same thing, what number is between 3 and 3? By default, you say 3. Notice if you add 3 with 3, divide by 2, 6 over 2, which is what? Is also 3, the same thing. So I don't want to... I don't want to leave you with this example to think, ah, oh, the answer is always going to, this, you're always going to have this situation. No. Usually you'll have something like this when it's an even number of data. In that case, determine the number that's midway between these two numbers that we're left standing with. Okay, that concept of midway, that thing that I went through, is actually um, beneficial for you for a lot of these definitions. Okay, you guys okay with that? All right. Um, that's how you determine the median value. The last center is called the mode. Do you guys know what the definition of the mode is? The mode is the most popular data value. Okay, the most popular data value. Remember we talked about this popular thing before? Right, being popular? All right, let's look at these data sets. Can you guys tell me what the mode is here? What's the mode for this first example? Yeah, we'll do the sleep one. We'll do, try to do each one so you guys get a sense of this. What is it? You guys are say six and seven. Why do you say six and seven? Six shows up how many times? Three, seven shows up how many times? Three, so they're both equally the most popular. Is that right? Now, in the case of the mode, you can have more than one answer. Here, the mode is six and seven. This is known as a data set that is bimodal. What does that mean, bimodal? Bi meaning what again? Two. Two modes. What if you had? three data values that were the most equally popular, then your data set is what? Trimodal. You guys okay with that? <coughs> what about this example here? What's the mode here? Anybody, can you tell me what the mode is for this data set? Zero and what? Three. Oh, another bimodal data set. What's the mode over here for this? What is it? One and two. Oh, all of these are bimodal. All of these are bimodal. Note, what if your data set looked like this? Three, negative two, one, zero, and a four. Can you tell me, what is the mode here? Yeah, you can conclude that, you know, they're all equally the most popular and by the logic we've been using, you can say, well, all of them, you know. However, is there any that is the most popular if they all voted for themselves? You can also say that maybe what? There is what? No mode. There isn't the most popular. Just like these last examples had a most popular data value, values that were voted more than the others. So in this setting, you could say that there's simply no what? No mode. No most popular. Everybody voted for themselves. Anybody know what that's called in life? Voting only for yourself? What is it? It's called narcissism. Any psychology majors here? This is what I think of when I say, ah, narcissistic data set. Oh, I mean, no mode, OK? All right, you guys OK with the centers? Is that easy or is that hard? OK, recall. Our, yeah, let's do this. Let's recall. Recall the morning's lecture, you were given a what? Frequency table. Is that right? 
0 to 5, what did that measure? 3, okay. 6 to what? 11, isn't that a, what was that? Is that a 5? 12 to 17, and that was a 10, right? 18 to what? 23 is a what? 4? 24 to 29 is a 2. <coughs> okay. Okay. Can you guys answer this question? What is the mean for this frequency table? What is the mean? Well, how do we go about this? You guys remember? The mean is found by doing what? How do you find the mean here? Adding all the data values together. Is that true? What does this table do for you? It just tells you that there are three data values that live where? In the first bin. Do you know how many zeros are in that data list? Do you know how many ones? Do you know how many ones are in that list? No. How many twos? No. How many threes? How many fours? How many fives? No, we don't know. That's a problem, is that right? Because I can't just very easily add these values. So this is how we fix the problem. Can you guys think of a value that best represents that first bin? Just think of a value that best represents that first bin. What number best represents the first bin? 2.5 Y. Why are you going to say use the midpoint of the bin? Because <laughs> you're right. We're going to use what? Since we don't know exactly how many values are, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, or 5, we're going to pretend and approximate and say, well, you know what? The number that best represents that first bin anyway is really what? The midpoint. And what was the midpoint again? 2.5. And then, oh, 8.5. And then 14.5. And then 20. And then 26. So since you don't know how many are in, you know, of each type of number here, what you're going to use is the value that best represents the bin. And yes, it is the what? The midpoint. You guys with me on that? So you're going to pretend and go, ah, there is three what? How many three? There, there's three 2.5s there. Is that true? So when I go here and say, OK, 2.5 plus 2.5 plus 2.5. Isn't that three 2.5s that I add? Say yes. OK. And how many 8.5s do I have? Five. So I'm going to have to do what? 8.5, 8.5. Oh my god, that's how many? That's a lot of 8.5s to write down. Does anybody know what this, this is called? Yes, repeat addition. This is repeat addition. What's shorthand for repeat addition? Where did you learn that? Outstanding, good. Nice. You guys hear that? Let's say it louder. You know where you learned this? OK, good. Repeat addition is really multiplication. And so what happens now is 